apple, you prune the crown quite hard and you leave the bottom alone. If you tru prune a, a, a satsuki that way, uh, you won't have a crown left. They're very weak, the crowns. It's the bottom branches that are strong. Uh, because in their natural growth, those grow out, drop down, root, grow out, drop down, root. And, and the crown is kept quite low because there's no advantage to getting height. Whereas in a, a woodland where a maple grows, it grows height and it wants its crown to get above all the competition so that it gets more light to grow quicker. Mm. Um, there are exceptions. There are odd, odd azaleas which have a, a, a dominant crown, but it is very much the exception. Um, and whereas a, with a maple you can prune and, and eventually you can get that growth pattern to spread and be fairly even the whole tree. Um, I've not managed to get that even growth across the Satsuki yet. Um, and I've been growing them for 20 odd years now. Um, someone's oh. asked about pond water. Um, Pond water would be good because a lot of the chemicals in, in the tap water would have gone out of it. But if, if it's hard water when it went in the pond, it will still be hard water when you take it out. Uh, because the calcium carbonate won't have evaporated. It, it will be there still. But it, it, it has other advantages because the water will naturally have natural nutrients in it. It will be free of chlorine and things like that. So... Pond water is good, um, but it won't solve your calcium carbonate problem in the, uh, Twickenham's Thames water. So they're coming off the chalk downs the same as we are down here. So you, you're not going to get rid of the calcium carbonate by, by leaving it stand. Um, Paul, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I've made you a co-host, so I'm hoping you can share your screen. Okay. Um, just move some things so I can find them again. Ah. So this is the muddler wheel. And, and around the edge of it, you've got all of the chemicals. Uh, QM is silica, so sand. And, and there's gates and reinforcement across there. Different things do different things. It takes about forever to understand it. I understand the bits I need to and the rest is someone else will tell me what I've done wrong. <laughs> the, the bit that I'm looking at is, is there's your calcium. Uh, that's the block. So when you've got calcium, it blocks the uh, potassium, which then blocks iron. And to unlock it, you put magnesium in, which unlocks the potassium, and then the iron is absorbed. Um, it takes forever to understand the wheel. Um, but it, it's useful to understand that there is science behind it. It's not just um, a witch doctor. Right. Um, The um, Satsuki growing season is, is quite weather dependent. Um, in a typical year, whatever that might mean now, um, January and February are very quiet. Um, your biggest problem in January and February is, is making sure that you, uh, you keep your Satsukis relatively dry and out of the wind and sheltered from the very extremes. Older trees will take a little bit of frost, um, one or two degrees. Young trees need to be sheltered from hard weather. They just, they don't like it. They struggle. Um, if you, if you, if your trees are in an area where they stay completely sodden, the, the roots get really quite cantankerous about it and the tree suffers really badly. Um, if you, if you've got, um, a carport or something of that, ilk, which will keep the worst of the rain off. The trees will be grateful for that. A little bit of windbreak will help keep them out of the, the, the from desiccating quite so quick. Um, through the winter, depending on the soil you're using, I use kanuma, which is a Japanese granular soil. It's 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 very hard on your hands, but the azaleas like it. it it's uh, 
a volcanic pumice and it, it's almost white when it's dry and it goes orange when it's wet um, and in that I will mix about five ten percent chop sphagnum uh, that go when that goes dry it, it, it lightens up you can feel it very it's very light soil to start with so as it dries you can definitely feel it in the pot so as you as you're going through the winter what you want to make sure is that the, the tree is drying really well before you put water on it again and when you water it you don't just splash a little bit on it water it properly so that water is running through the pot and then leave it dry again and that's why the carport or or some sort of shelter to keep rain off of them is really important they want they want that opportunity to dry out through the winter period and i'm not i'm talking plant dry not desiccated coconut dry um so it's it's, it's a, a soil that's got a little bit of moisture in it but not 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 at, you know out of the oven dry um you don't need to fertilize the trees until march at this if you're going to start fertilizing start about march um they are heavy feeders um they will take everything you can throw at them uh i i I use, as I said earlier, Biogold, Naruka, and, and this uh, product called Sierra. Um, Chris, um, um, Welsh Chris, sells uh, a similar one, which has got magnesium in it. Um, the magnesium, as I just said, is, is really important because it, it's doing the same job as Epsom salts, but it's being there it's in a slow release form. So it's there continuously and it just helps a little bit as well. Um, I. I've seen pictures of trees um, in Japan where they've taken uh, a pair of stockings and filled it up with food and wrapped that around the trunk of the azalea. And that was considered to be moderate feeding. Um, they, 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 they are hungry trees. And the more you feed them, the more flour you're gonna get. Um, the flour won't, feeding them this year, you're not gonna see the benefit until next year. Um, you, you, your feeding is always about what's going to happen next year. Um, it's, it's Welsh Chris is Chris Thomas. Um, it, it's generally when I'm feeding the trees, I, I use um, Ken Lever from Windy Banks sells a little round basket with a spike on it, and I will I will plant those all the way around the pot with a mix of different fertilizers just around the whole right at the outside edge if it's a tree that i'm developing i'll put two rows of those around the edge just to get a lot of food in um i tend to use um miracle grows it used to be miracid it's the ericaceous feed you, you put it in a bottle and plug it into the hose and just waft it over everything i use it on everything it, it, just because it's acid and because I've got the hard water problem, it helps all my trees. So while it's aimed at ericaceous plants, it helps all of them. Um, as, as you come in through March, um, you, you will probably have a heart attack at some point because your trees will do really nasty things like Disappeared at the moment. Oh, there it is. You 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 will find two or three times a year your Satsuki will do something like this. I don't want to do that. I've got to learn the technology. Sorry. It 
it will do oh. something like this, which is quite horrible when you see it. Um, they have they, they shed their leaf two or three times. So this was this is actually the summer malt, but it does the same thing at the beginning of the spring. It, the first time you see it, you, you go into mild panic. And every every time after that, it's just panic um, because you 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 have to believe that when those leaves fall away, the leaves behind it are going to be strong. When it's like this, you can see there's a fairly good spread of green across the whole of the tree, and then you've got the yellow um, leaves in the background. That's a good sign. If you see that yellow in one part of the tree, it's time to to start worrying. It's um, it's it's quite frightening the first time you see it, as I say. But it, it's normal; it really is. Um, what they 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 go through this spread three times a year, where they 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 change the leaf. They have a, a summer leaf, an autumn leaf, and a winter leaf, and they go through that process at each of those stages. The winter one is the worst one because they come up with a thick fleshy leaf to try and protect themselves from the, the winter. Uh, it, it's, it's normal, just get used to it. Um, in March, what you'll find is the flower buds will start to swell up. The, the tree will start to, to fill out and, and, and grow again. Towards the end of April, um, um maybe tail end of march you will start to find that the tree has got a lot of sucker growth coming out of what i call water shoots and things like that um, if the water shoots are in a place where you want a branch to to grow leave them they will with a little bit of tlc over two or three years you can get them to back bud and fill in holes um if they're in a place where they're of no use to you as a, a part of the tree's development and style, just take them out because they're taking energy away from the tree. As, as we move towards the end of April, um, the, the beginning of May, the flowers will start to open. You'll start to see color. Um, tail end of May, beginning of June, the flowers will open. Um, they, they look gorgeous, um, but they take a lot of energy out of the tree. Enjoy them for a week, two weeks, and then strip them off the tree. Um, if, you, if you've got a show coming up, you can stretch that, but enjoy them for what they are. It's a, a seasonal tree. Don't let the... Um, the, the um, the, the, the flower sap the tree too much. As we move through June and into July, it's the really heavy work part of, of the sap of the year. Um, it, it's the time to prune the tree. It's the time to repot the tree. Um, my preference for repotting, as I said earlier, is March because it gives the tree longer to put roots on. If you repot them, in June, July, you need to do it as soon as you can, and certainly no no later than the end of July, because that gives them July, August, September, October to re-establish the roots before they're into winter. If you do it in March, they've got March, April, May, June, July, you know, they've got that much bigger window to grow roots. So I tend to try and do it in March, but like everything, you run out of time in March, and you've got this second opportunity with Satsuki's. Um, it, it's that's not what I wanted to do. Um, and 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 at the end of June, um, middle of June, they'll start to look like this. The flowers are starting to grow brown around the edges. Um, the the they're quite full. The, this was. This had been in flower for two weeks at this point, so it was time to work on it. 
So the first thing is you do is you strip the flowers off. Um, and then you start pruning. If you see the, the right hand side of the tree is unpruned and you're starting to see the pruned branches through here where they're starting to get thinner. Um, and, and you end up, if you look, you can see my shears underneath there where I'm pruning the roots. That's how the tree wants to be after you've pruned it. You need to be, you, you need to prune the tree according to its vigor. A really vigorous satsuki you can prune quite heavily. One that's mar marginal or not strong, you prune much, much lighter. Um, this is a moderate prune because the, the, we were repotting it in July, so I didn't want to take too much out of it. This tree is now completely greened up and refilled all of those gaps. You can't see your hand through the pads anymore. Um, what, what I've done is I've taken the tree out of the pot and I'm in the process of cleaning up the top surface. If you see the, the orange and the, the light colored stuff around the base, that's the color it should be. All of this black is rotted root and plant food. So I need to get that out of the tree. This is what I would call a moderate repot. Um, every five to 10 years, you need to do a heavy repot, which basically you take the tree out of the pot and you get a, a, a jet wash and jet wash all the soil out. And I, I really do mean a jet wash. I've got a little kasha that I use and, and you get absolutely covered head to foot in water and muck, but you get all of the soil out. For the, 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 the four or nine years in between, you basically scrape all the top surface off and prune all the roots off that surface. Then you start to work out the work the old soil out of the base and, and prune back all of these big heavy roots off the base. And you can start to see in the middle there the light yellow that I'm looking for. That's fresh, I'm not, that's unspent kanuma. plodding away through it and and eventually you get to a point where you you re-put the tree back into its pot um, the mix of soil i've got there is, is kanuma it's got uh, about 80 80 85 percent kanuma five ten percent uh, of kiyodama a good free draining gravel and about five percent of chop sphagnum I get B and Q hanging basket facts, fagged and put it into a food processor and I mix that in with the soil. Um, it's the only food processor we have in the house. It's, it, I, I, I wouldn't get away with using one out of the kitchen. Um, you water it in really well. You can see that's been watered, it's gone orange. It would have been almost white when it first went into the pot. closer up vision of it. Um, and what I'm doing here is that the, the, the top half inch of that soil is the most active growth bit of the satsuki. It's where all the fibrous roots are that absorb food. And the problem with that is that it's the top layer that dries fastest. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting a layer of chops sphagnum on the top what that layer of chop sphagnum does is it creates a, a blanket that protects the top layer. It keeps it moist a little bit longer. So when you water the tree, you water it until the water's going through the pot and the bottom of the pot will stay wettest longest. So by putting the blanket of sphagnum on top, I keep the top moist a little bit longer so that the bottom can catch up with the top drying out and it dries out much more evenly with that layer on it. The, the, you have to be careful with it though, because if you let that sphagnum layer dry out, it will become like a, a blank, a, a shield and it will just shed water over the edge of the pot. So you don't water the tree every day, but you mist that moss to keep it damp. Uh, the, the, darker center there is what I've done is I've taken some moss that I liked and I put that in the food processor 
and I've just patted that into the surface. What that does is in two or three weeks from when this was done, the whole top surface is green with fresh moss um, and, and nice moss, moss that I want there, not, not horrible stuff that's self-seeded. Um, and the moss you can keep, if you see some moss you like on, the, on, on a footpath, on a wall, scrape it up, put it in a pot. When you get round to it, put it in your food processor, uh, mix it up with other spores, and you just sprinkle that on the surface and pat it in. Um, and it, it will grow even after, the, after 18 months, two years, it will come back. The spores are designed to protect the moss that way. And that was the, the final repot before it went back on the bench. You can see that the bottom branches have been pruned quite, quite heavily. You can see a lot more air through there. That crown has still got a lot of green in it. Um, a crown on an azalea will always be a bunch of branches like that rather than a, a single branch like you would on a maple. Um, they, they just they don't form nice crowns, so you have to let them form a, a clump at the top. Um, you will also see s some silly things in the tree. So the, the, it, it zigzags. There's a long straight in there, and then it starts zigzagging at shorter intervals again. Uh, it's it's quite reminiscent of trees from Japan because that's pre Second War, that's the Second War, and that's post Second War in terms of how it grew. So during the Second War, they didn't have the manpower to maintain the trees, so they planted them out in the field and just let them grow. And then they started restyling them after the war. And you will quite often see that long straight in the trees. The other thing you'll see in the tree is that the branches slope slightly to the front. That's so that the, the, the trees are grown predominantly to show in flower. And to show the flower to best advantage, the back of the branch is higher. So you can see the flowers all the way down the branch. Um, where are we time? It's 40 minutes. Um, the, the, there are a huge, oh, when did the last, in terms of the last feed, I, once you've started feeding, I, I don't actually take the last set of food off. I just leave it there. They will feed mildly through the winter. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out and put new food on in July and August but I wouldn't necessarily strip all the old food off either. There'll be some traces there still, and it'll feed. It's a bit like pines. They feed gently through the winter. They don't take in mass food. The, the, the period they take in the mass food is, is early in the growing season, but they're, they're continuously growing. Um, you can see it in the way they change the leaves at the beginning of the winter, at the beginning of the spring. So they need some energy to be coming in but it's not not worth putting brand new. When I repot the tree, I don't put new food on until the next spring because they just won't absorb it at that rate at that time. There, there's also, I'm gonna say a tradition that there's a suggestion that if you're gonna show a, a, a tree that you take the fertilizer off as the flower buds open, um, the, the, the suggestion is that the, the flower bud will go soft if you leave the food on them. I've not found that to be the case. And I, I would only take the food off the tree if I was gonna show it. Um, a, a tree on a show bench with three rows of fertilizer baskets around the bottom is not pretty. <laughs> um, I, the, the, um, the orange, Kanuma doesn't look pretty. So if I'm going to put a Satsuki on show, I will clean off the edges, take out all the weeds, the usual bits, and I will top dress the Satsuki with a fine layer of fine Akadama. Because the, the Akadama has a nicer color than the, the, the um, Kanuma. Uh, and, and judges like it in preference to the orange of the Kanuma. Can you grow them in, you can grow them in all sorts of soils. Um, your biggest problem, a lot of rhododendrons are grown initially in a peat mix. 
if you get an, a, a rhododendron or satsuki that's in a peat mix and you want to change to kanuma it's a two or three year process don't change the soil instantly um, they they are the roots adapt to the soil they grow in and in kanuma they grow a lot of very fine roots in peat they're slightly coarser so you need to give the tree a chance so if you're going to change from one to the other basic mix what i tend to do is take wedges out over two or three years and let the tree adapt so it's a long-term project to change soils um, once you've repotted your tree you go through a regime of, of they, they absolutely need the, the wet dry cycle at that point um, satskis are very lazy rooted plants if you keep watering it the roots will stay in a very tight ball at the center of the tree and, and when you get into the summer and you need the roots to be in the pot to absorb water they'll still be in that little tight ball in the center of the tree so you have to encourage the roots to go out and look for water by letting it dry out uh, you don't with a, a white pine that the tradition used to be that you would you would wait until you thought it need watering and water it the next day azaleas are very similar in that respect that you if you're working from home and you can do it you want to wait until they they start to show signs of stress and then water them um, you want to push them right up to the boundary as much as you can uh, the more you the more you make the roots exercise to find water, the stronger the roots are going to be. Um, it's, the, it's the Achilles heel with the rhododendrons and azaleas, Satskis in particular, their roots. They're very prone to photophora, root rot, and all sorts of other nasties. Uh, you've got it's like gold dust, is it basically? Um, you can't buy it anymore anywhere, I've tried. And you can't even get it on, on flea bay. So um, there, there are some um, um, natural ones now that have been, as I said earlier, and, and sulfur will help, but there, there's not really a cure. Um, you will have seen the Satskis on show benches and they show very distinct coloring on, on, on the flowers. There's lots of different colors on the same plant. That's a natural phenomenon. It's not someone's grafted three plants together or anything. It's it's um each the, there's a number of um uh veins that go up the tree and each of those veins will have a particular color according to variety and so the solid colors will come off the center of the vein the multicolored branches will come off between two veins and be taking sap from both of them and what you will find is that one vein will be dominant in a tree so in a, a, a kaho, the dominant vein is white, almost always, except in the, one of the ones we've got here. And so the white seems to have disappeared, which is extremely unusual. Um, what you have to be careful is not to prune out the non-dominant color. If you prune the non-dominant color too hard, you will find that the dominant color will swamp the tree and you'll end up with a white tree instead of a pink and white tree. So um you, if if a tree is looking like it's not got all of the colors it should have mark the branches after and, and prune those lighter and prune the dominant color much heavier um you you'll quite often see it shows if you look carefully you'll see branches with little twist of copper wire on them or little tags on them that's so that the person pruning the tree knows i need to be careful on that branch I, I need to prune the other ones heavy. Um, in terms of bugs and pests, Satsuki suffer with all the usual ones that um, most bonsai will struggle with. Um, it does struggle with vine weevil, um, not as much as some trees because um, if you've seen what um, Kanuma does to your hand when you repot and you understand why nothing really wants to live in it, it's, it's, it dries your hands out instantly. I carry hand cream around with me when I'm doing Satsuki and use it liberally after I've repotted. Um, it, they suffer with caterpillars. There's a particular little green bugger that if, if you get it, it'll, it'll 
defoliate your tree before you blinked. Um, so you have to watch out for them. It gets attacked by the, the white fly, green fly, aphids, all the usual bits. Um, red spider mite can be a bit of a problem sometimes um, because you tend to, because when it's in flower, you're trying to keep the water off the crown, the, the leaf. It can get dry in the core and you suddenly find you got red spider mite at that point. Um, all of those except the red spider mite, I treat with um, uh, Provado or a systemic insecticide generally. Um, someone was asking me the other day, can you use Provado? I've never had a problem, but I know some people have. I, 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 I mix Provado up in a, a pack sprayer and spray everything with it including um uh, pomegranate and um all sorts that i've told it won't you can't use it on i've never had a serious problem on a healthy tree um if if you've got an azalea what i would tend to do is try a branch and see how it reacts before i went wholesale if you're worried about it i can only say from experience that it's never caused me a problem um, if you want um, dish soup, all of those, the usual cures will work on the, the um, leaf munching type insects. Um, if you're going to use dish soap, I tend to use the cheapest dish soap you can buy, um, not because I'm cheap, but because it contains less um, chemical additives. So it will be more soap and less the, the salt to make it last longer and bubbles and things like that. And some of those salts can damage the plant so you want as little you want as much soap and as little else uh, everything else in the soap that you can get um you used to be able to buy soft soap from the chemist but i don't think they sell it anymore and um, that would be your best option if you can find it still it's it comes like a jelly and you you take a couple of tablespoons of it out of the pot mix it with hot water and dilute it with that from there um they, rhododendrons occasionally suffer with mildew and mold. Um, I would just tend to use a bit of sulfur on that to get rid of it. it sulfur is really effective at killing molds and mildews. Um, they occasionally, you, you'll find snails and things on that. I've never seen snail damage on a tree, so they're just using it to hide. Um, your biggest problem normally will be things like blackbirds because they love the fertilizer with all the bugs that are in it. Um, I take it as as a a, a, um, a balanced thing, and I accept the blackbirds because I like them, and I, I'll smack them if I catch them. But they don't do any real damage; they're just looking for food. And there's normally some maggots and that in the fertilizer, so it's it's fair game, I guess. Um, If the easiest way to know if it's a Satsuki azalea, sorry, someone's asked the question, is that um, is when it flowers. Um, a Satsuki azalea will flower late May, early June. Uh, a rhododendron, a, a standard azalea flowers early or later than that. Rhododendrons generally is, come out in um, March, it's, it's spring and things like that. So the, the, the flowering time is, is a big indicator. The second thing that will help is that Satsuki tend to be multicolored on a plant. Most azaleas and rhododendrons and, and those sort of plants tend to be a single color. It does, you can get single colored Satsukis, but if it's flowering in late May, early June, it'll be a Satsuki almost certainly. If it's flowering earlier or later, July onwards, then it's probably an azalea of some variety. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about Photophora. Um, Photophora is a particularly nasty version of root rot. Um, it's actually a notifiable disease even today. Um, it, it, you will have heard it, it as sudden oak death syndrome or um, ash dieback and things like that. It's a, a, a uh, uh, it's a strange it's half animal half plant half fungus and I know that's three halves but hey um, it, it, it's 
it's right on the edges of the planet plant kingdom so it has characteristics of all sorts of different things it's aggressive it will spread in water um, it's naturally occurring now it was imported with asian plants probably pre-bonsai so it's it's um we just have to live with it if you're using rainwater i do what i call the crest test so every two three weeks you you take a piece of kitchen towel spring sprinkle some crest seed on it and and water it with the water butt water if the crest grows you know the water's okay if the crest dies then it's time to clean the water butt and there's disinfectants you can put in there to to help um it will photophora has been known to wash off roofs it's been known to um, splash up off the road and attach itself to boots and get tracked in that way it's a nasty little bugger it lasts five years in the ground with no um, support system uh, there's no known cure for it except a bonfire uh, they're, they're, they're starting to wedge around it in in minimizing the damage it does and slowing it down but nothing really has been found that completely stops it the the, the more common problem with azaleas is root rot and that's just a natural that's a fungi rather than photophora and and that as i said earlier you, we used to use benlate there, there are some organics and there are you can reduce your ph with sulfur because the, the sulfur will kill the bugger if it comes into contact with it and the lower pH reduces the, 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 the spread rate of it. Um, if you get a tree where you suspect rot, that's where third repotting comes in and you do it now. Um, because once that root rot gets established in the tree, it's really hard to get out. Um, you end up having to let the tree dry out, um, molly coddle it for a year or two, and, and you can get something back eventually. Um, but it, it's hard work um, and it's soul destroying at times because you, you, you don't know whether it's going to keep moving forward. It will go forward to a certain point and then drop back. We had one which we've lost the two bottom branches, but we've saved the upper tree and it'll, we, we can restyle it. We, we, we're comfortable now, but that took four years to get back to health. They're long term projects when the root rot gets into them. Um, I think that I've got some pictures I can show if people are interested or I can take some questions. I think if uh, we can have some questions and then the pictures, please. Uh huh. Anybody would like to put your hand up so I could unmute you? Don't be shy, Gregor. Tony, Tony Keatley, come on, Steve. These are some of the bonsai members. Everybody else that's with us, Paul, are visitors. All right. So uh, I, I believe we have 17 tonight, uh, which is a record for us. Uh, well, so far, I've found everything you've shared very very interesting uh, informative and i love these type of talks from experts in their field sharing their knowledge and, and it's just been wonderful in that sense so nobody's got any questions for you so maybe we could have those pictures i'll show you a few and if anyone wants as we go through ask the questions and we'll see what we can sort out Um, this particular azalea was given to me. It's it's uh, uh, an azalea that was grown. Um, Alex Kennedy used to come to the shows with um, two and a half inch square pots with a single um, stem in it. And this was grown from one of those. It was probably 10 or 15 years old when I was given it um, by a very close friend who was giving up bonsai because of her health. And we've had it for probably 15 years. It's it's very unusual as a, as a Satsuki azalea in that it's pure white. Um, white in Japan is a funeral color, so you don't tend to see them. 
Um, this is one we're playing with at the moment. It, it's it, it's um, you got one in the background, which is the white and pink, which I think is Carho, but I would be wrong to say with any certainly. Um, this is Kazan, I think. Um, it's a bright, vivid purple. It's an in-your-face purple pink. It's gorgeous when it's in full flower. This is one that we've been growing from a cutting looking at it. This tree, that that was a, a, a prolific flowering year for this tree. Um, it's a gorgeous little tree. It's got a full crown. Um, Brenda prunes this tree twice a year, really heavily. And it doesn't matter what we do to this tree, it doesn't flower any, with any real profusion so far. Um, but it's gorgeous as a tree in its own right. It's got a full crown to it and it's really nice. This is the, the in your face purple again. Um, pot needs cleaning and needs weeding, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> it, it, the the surface root is really hard on azaleas because the roots are so fibrous so they, they take a lot of work to get that when they're doing that in japan i can't claim that i grew that this is the the one that we were looking at a minute ago and she's just started to prune it um you can see the little pile there i think we'll see it that's some more you can see how much she's taken out of it she takes that out of it at least once a year and probably half that again a second time and and it's it just doesn't want to flower heavily um that's it pruned uh, you can see how much light you can see through that crown with this particular tree it's very vigorous growing and it needs that sort of prune every year other trees you'd need to prune much more lightly than that this is the white one you saw earlier before it's come into full flower. Um, the giveaway is the black grass. Um, Joy had a strange choice in pots when she gave it to us. We've changed the pots since then. Satsuki's are very, very hard to put pots with because uh, you want a, a pot. If you're going to use a colored pot, the pot wants to match the flower uh, because that's when you're going to show it. And when I say match it, I don't mean if you've got a, a red flower, you want a red pot, but the, the pot and flower need to work together. Uh, that's a little kakua. Um, that flower is really early. That one will flower late March, early April. It's the almost always the first of the azaleas to flower. Um, that's been grown from a cutting. Uh, that's a different one. Uh, I can't remember the name of this. This is a, a, a 16 syllable name and it something um, some Nahikari is the last bit. I can't remember the first bit. It's spider flower. This is the one that we we've lost the two bottom branches with, but it, it's still a really nice tree. Um, it's well back on its way to recovery, but that's taken three years so far. It's not flowered that heavy for a long time. What you'll find is you, this spider flower is um, not a dominant flower. So here you've got the spider flower there and you've got some whole flowers there. You need to prune those whole flowers out of the tree or it will take over. I really like that, Paul. Yeah. I'm told it's, uh, oops, what happened there? That's not what I meant to do. Um, that's Caho. It, it, it's a, a strange, Caho's a strange tree. It, it, it has, uh, sorry, Guillotin. It, it's a strange, variety in that it goes through a cycle of three so it'll have a year when it's predominantly pink a year when it's predominantly white and a year when it's a mix of both 
<coughs> and in Japan, they will only show it when it's a mix of both. So it's, they only show it every three years. It's 20 hours. Um, That's the same. This this must was. I think this is this year because that's a lot more flower than in the picture we had earlier. Yeah, that's this year. So it flowered a bit heavier this year. It's really pretty. That's the kakua again. Uh, this is, um, oh, what's his name? Tom. Um, it's another red um, spider, it, completely red all over. Uh, it's a Kinzai. It, it, it completely covered in that, as dense as the Giotan earlier when it's in full flower. I've got three little ones that have been repotted over the last couple of years, and this was this year's flowering. That's the purple one we were looking at earlier. That's the same. Uh, no, that's the other one. That's Giotan again. That's just a close up full of the flowers. That's what it should be. So you've got white, pink, and the really salmon pink through it. And, and, it's not quite fully flowered. It should have, when that's in full flower, you shouldn't see any green. That looks like Aoi, which is blue, I think. I, I, I'm slowly picking up the, the, we've seen that, that's, you can see how hard back it's pruned. There would have been a flower there and it's pruned right back to just leaving a couple little bits of green out of the branch. Um, these are, oh, it's really hard when you don't know the variety names and these were sold to me unnamed. The only way you can do it is when they're in flower, you sit there going through the thousand varieties until you find a match. And, and then you, you sort of attach that. This is, that's the owie. That's the white one before it fills out. And this is a, 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 a dark purple. This is what the hockey stick we call it. We might have a better picture of it. This was a new variety. It, it's, it's, it doesn't have a name in this country, but it's, it's unusual in that it's double flowered. Most Satskis are single flowered. We can't quite get vigor into this tree. We're still working on it. I can't, don't recognize the variety, but. It, 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 oh, this is the owie. Okay. Um, the, the, the pink in there is not dominant. So I have to be really careful not to prune that branch or I'll lose that pink in the tree. So we have to keep moving it around. Um, I, I've got loads of these, so we're, we're towards end of the hour that you asked for, Tony. If, if I flick through them, if people want to. Paul, I think John John had a question. Go on. Uh, do you have any advice on cuttings that you can air layer what time of year? Thank you, John. Um, they, Satsuki's take from cuttings really easily. Um, all I do with them is I, when we prune the trees, we will take the, the unusual varieties and we will stick them in a pot of the canuma with a little bit more sphagnum moss than normal or into a, a, a fairly free draining peat mix. And we put that under the benches of the, the normal trees where they get watered when the, the water from the bench drips through and keeps them moist. So it's a more moist environment. 
semi-shade out of the wind. Um, air layering I've never tried on Satsuki, but everything says it should be relatively simple to do. I would look to do it in um, March, probably, when they're starting to come into growth. Uh, it will give the tree the maximum chance to give you the, the roots off the air layer and it will allow you to cut that off at the beginning of next the year, the following year and still give the tree a chance of of growing nicely um generally once they're in flower you don't want to be doing too much to them so that's may and june gone july you're pruning and that you don't want to do it then you, you take the cuttings from the prunings but you don't want to be messing with the tree at that point and after that, you're really too late for air layers until March again. So I, I would I would try March and, and expect to take it off probably towards the end of the summer and, and put it into a, a cold greenhouse or somewhere where a cold conservatory or something like that, where you can keep the they at that point, it's not going to take any frost. So it wants to be frost free environment for the first year or two. Mm. Paul, uh, just out of interest, your specialist subject with, with, with this is quite apparent. How, how come you, you, you specialised in this particular area of bonsai? Um, I just liked them, so I started growing them and it, it was attrition. Alex Kennedy left and... Um, no one else was talking about them and I, I, I started learning more about them. It, it, it wasn't something I set out to do. It is I, just progression, I guess. I've been growing them for 20 odd years. You learn a bit, you kill a couple <laughs> and you find out to, how to keep them alive. Yeah, as, yeah with many. Uh, I've got a question. Oh, right. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, we are new to this, so bear with. Um, I bought um, two years ago some small azalea plants, and in each pot there was four plants. Yeah. Um, we literally just cut through them. We actually got four plants out of each pot. Yeah. And we ended up with about twelve plants. Yeah. Um, two two of them I've kind of picked out, and they're turning into quite a nice cascade. And we repotted last year. And it flowered lovely last year. And it has got a real nice show. It's, it's got a nice cascade look, but obviously still very new. Um, the growth is happening really nicely on the outside. Um, but I was told that when you cut the flowers off, you have to prune quite quickly. Otherwise, you're cutting off next year's flower buds. Is that right? Yeah. That's why you want to do your flower pruning if you think they, they they typically flower the end of May, beginning of June, um, through the tail end of June, beginning of July is the ideal time to do your pruning. So you, as soon as they're finished flowering, and, and as I say, I wouldn't, unless I was going to take the plant to a show or I had friends coming around that I wanted to show it to, I wouldn't leave the flowers on much longer than a week or two at most. Enjoy it while it's there. When you're stripping the flowers off, you'll, you'll have the flower, the, the, the stem of the flower will connect to the tree. And around the base of that stem, there'll be five shoots. Yeah. Depending on whether you want the tree to extend growth or whether you want to stay where you are, if you want it to extend, you leave two buds there growing in the right direction. Right. If you want it to stay where it is, you prune it so you leave one uh, one of the old leaves there just to draw sap, and it will rebud and stay tight. Okay. It's yeah, because I'm finding to that. Show the... you when you're close, but. <laughs> so, so, so at the moment, I've now got new growth over the whole lot, but there's yeah. not much leaf underneath. Yeah. So am I too late now? Obviously, to... too late now. Yeah. So yeah. Wait, wait, how can, how can yeah. I get it to back bud next year, or kind of get further in? Um, when it's flowered, you go through the process, and it will back bud but you've lost this year. Okay. What happens with the azaleas, if you don't prune it, those five buds will extend out two or three inches. Yeah. And then next year you'll have a flower there. And if you didn't prune it, it'd be another two or three inches. So in, so what you'll have to do is at the end of next year, 
go in and prune out the flowers and decide which of the four or five because what you'll have at the end of each branch there'll be a star of branches take three of those out and start to pull it back that way okay um, okay if you do it now you, you you're just going to risk the tree because it's too late for it to do anything now okay and also so at the moment i've got them into like a i've, I've done them twice repotted into a bigger plant pot um so when do i just keep can i increase in the plant pot for now and don't play with the roots too much as in getting it into a, a kind of bonsai pot or not or yes um, I, I do it the other way. I will get my roots sorted before I sort the crown. Oh, okay. Um, typically, the way I would grow a tree is I will get the roots sorted because they're the hardest bit to get the way you want them. Then you develop the trunk and then you develop the finite branches and ramification. Because right, okay. if you get all the ramification right and then you start playing with the roots, you're going to lose some of the ramification. So oh, if you right. grow the tree, roots, trunk, branches ramification it's a progression okay so obviously um the azalea and suzuki roots are very different to a normal tree um so when i take it out this pot next year it's going to be a massive massive compact roots isn't it like yeah. first time i first bought it do i literally can i literally be quite ruthless with it and cut them and yeah it's a it's a balancing act if i knew the tree i could tell you I didn't think about bringing the tree, it. I can tell you, but it, it's um, if the tree is really vigorous, you can probably take thirty or forty percent of the roots off. Right. Okay. If the tree is okay, you can probably take ten or twenty percent off. If the tree's weak, then just spread them out and let them keep growing. So, okay. it, so it's currently in like a, a, a the roots flower. In, sorry. Sorry, it's currently like a deep flower pot, so yeah. about kind of that that ish wide. Um, do I like the start? I mean, I mean, it is quite healthy, I think, and it's it's flowered lovely last year. It's got loads of new growth on it still now. Do I just take off? You're saying thirty percent, like just slice off the bottom, and then gradually, and then make no, it you wider. Need, you need to for the, for the, that repot. What I would be inclined to do is wash out all of the soil, so I can see nice. all of the roots. Okay. And I would look to see there are generally three roots in a tree, and I'll undo that in a minute. There's generally a very thick tap root, which azaleas don't have. Yeah. You then have the, the guy rope roots, the thick branchy roots that tie the tree into the ground. The azalea will have some of those. What the azaleas have mostly are what the, the, they're like fine feeder roots, in, and in an azalea, they're like wire wool. Yeah, so yeah. Um, and what you have to do is untangle that and get that to sit in, in a bonsai pot rather than a flower pot. Now, if you're growing a cascade, there's not going to be a lot of difference in terms of shape. Yeah. So it's more about untangling them and um, doing them doing them in a way that you get the roots to untangle and grow into the pot rather than into okay. each other. Yeah. Um, Okay, when, when we get through the other end if, if someone talks we can come up and do a, a, a demonstration talk workshop whatever yeah fab. Um, let's That'd get great. through um, nasty coronavirus one yeah. one day <laughs> we're definitely up for that Paul sorry can I just ask can I just ask a quick question as well yeah. um, I uh, got a Satsuki Macrantha orange um, and I did a bit of styling on it um, earlier on in the year at one of the club meetings so going into spring that'll be its first repot so going off what we've just spoken about um, it, it was a really strong growing um, azalea so I pruned quite a lot off it yeah um, Ha in terms of reducing the root ball, again, 30%. No more than, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, and uh, what, what you'll find is that when you're cleaning the tree, because the roots are like wire wall, they're quite tangled. So as you're yeah. cleaning the soil out, be it with a jet wash or a, a, a chopstick, you will pull a lot of root out and break it. Yeah. So, 
don't don't clean the roots and then take 30 percent off look at what you pulled out while you're cleaning it okay and and will it be okay to go straight into kanuma what's it in now it it's in it's it's in compost that it'll have been grown in at the nursery so right and how old's the tree roughly um difficult to say i suppose um is it cutting ish or is it a more mature plant no it's more mature what i'd be inclined to do is i i would normally only put five or ten percent sphagnum in okay what i would be inclined to do is when you when you take it out to repot get a ball sort of half a tennis ball size of sphagnum and screw it up into a ball yeah and put that right in the core of the the root ball okay and then instead of five or ten percent of sphagnum in the soil mix, I would probably bump that up to ten or fifteen percent, so that okay. it's there's a lot of sphagnum, there's a lot of organic in the soil. Yeah. The reason I would use sphagnum rather than peat is sphagnum's got some antiseptic qualities to it, so it will help the roots heal a bit as well. Yeah. And it retains moisture a bit better than peat. Okay. And then I would use the the balance mix. I'd use sort of 90% Kanuma and 10% Kiyodama. Um, okay. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, but it sounds like it's a, a much softer compost. You'd take out a quarter this year, a quarter next year, and a quarter the year after. But it, from what you're saying, it's a much looser mix than that. So when you start to clean it out, it's going to um, fall out anyways, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a yeah. perfect world, what you do is you, the roots will be established and you would take out segments all around the trees, a bit like you do with pines when you're repotting them. Yeah. But if, it, if it's if it's a loose peat mix, when you pull it out of the pot, half of it is going to fall away anyways. Um, I, I would What I would do is I it, do the mix with slightly more sphagnum than I would normally. I would... Um, molly coddle it a little bit I'd, I'd give it some super thrive or hb 101 or something just to give it a boost start it off once it's been in the pot for two or three weeks give it some um seaweed extract not fertilizer seaweed extract yeah just the tonics their boost the the it's a bit like chicken soup for you when you're sick yeah, we, we we use quite a lot of the seaweed feed at work on the uh, on the boxes, and yeah. uh, they re they respond really well to it. So yeah, and and just keep it out of the wind until the roots have re-established. Yeah, because what you need to, you need the roots to re-establish fast enough that the crown doesn't desiccate. Yeah. Any questions from anybody else? Feel free, people. We have this opportunity. So, Paul, hopefully when uh, Corona's over with in the next three years, uh, we could get you up to Twickenham uh, and come and problem. do a day with us. Yeah. Do a uh, day or a new work club. Up, whatever works. We'll see where we are when we get there, eh? Yeah, absolutely. But I really appreciate the effort and your time uh, this, this evening. We have another question, I believe, is it? No, my battery has just come up. I will say, stay as long as I can, whoever that is. Right, so on behalf of- I'll email of you some bit up to help, uh, like the spreadsheets and stuff like that. You can distribute them to whoever. Oh, brilliant, that'd be- That'd be lovely for everybody, really. Uh, you, you've run, uh, you're running Eastley Bonsai Cup? Yeah, that's correct. You was also chairman with FOBS? No, I've never chairman. I, I did secretary for five years and I was a member of the committee for 10. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. That's right. Uh, and sorry i'm trying to think of some of the information you sent anyway my question we're a new club 
one year old. We're registered with FOBS. We have 12 members on the books. During COVID, we started to hold Zoom meetings once a fortnight. Uh, and we were talking about each individual's trees and doing tree of the month uh, and trying to keep a good interaction going. Do you have any advice and guidance tips to help us grow as a club? I, I think, I mean, you, it, it's growing clubs is a difficult balance because you, you need a range of people for a club and, and all of us will develop different interests. I, I enjoy all sorts of different things. I do kusumono, I do sake, I do maples, I do pines, but I'm fairly unusual. A lot of people will just go down one variety and that's it. Um, it it's keeping, keeping your subjects changing and keeping it so that if someone's got a question they can ask, you don't want to become too strong in one area and not able to help someone that comes in through the door and says, how do I? Um, it's always difficult. I used to do a lot of demonstrations at Hilliers where you'd get people come in with their Chinese elm that they'd bought from B&Q six months ago and they'd watered it once and it was brown and they asked you how they could rescue it. Um, you, you need to find nice ways of helping people understand it. Um, and, and that's, I, I tend to have lots of trees that are in different stages so I can show people different things. I've got from cuttings that have just been planted this year through to trees that have been shown in Europe. So it's having that range available to talk to people about. Well, I think, yeah. Uh, what you've just said there, uh, and hopefully I can speak on behalf of the other members, uh, we seem to be doing that organically, so it's quite good fun, really. Yeah. Oh, Tina's got a question. Yeah. Yeah. You need to unmute hey. yourself. Have you got... <laughs> it's unmuted. Can you hear? Yeah. 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 Paul, have you got a preferred um, species? The one I'm working on. <laughs> I enjoy them all for different reasons. Right. Um, it's always sad when one decides it doesn't like you anymore and decides to go somewhere else. But um, I, I've learnt lots on different trees by working with them, and and you, you get a little bit you get a little bit better every day that you play with them. Um, there's no point in having a tree that you, you're not happy with it and not experimenting with it, how you can make it better. Yeah. Regarding the, the cost of these trees, um, they are very expensive, Statsky especially. And obviously I can tell by obviously the one you described earlier, like it's pre-war and that's, that's obviously why it's expensive. Um, can you get a cheaper Satsuki to start off with for novices like us? Obviously, I've got these little azaleas that I'm kind of like nurturing on, but is there a place that you recommend to go to to use as local or? The, the, the problem's going to be that all of the satakis that are sold commercially come from Japan. Right. There's none grown in Europe. Um, it's going to be interesting because most of them went into Holland and then got redistributed around Europe. Um, when, when, when we get out of the eu completely and everything has to come through customs that's going to be an interesting challenge with a living plant um, i'm actually, actually a florist myself yeah so it's really going to be a problem when brexit happens yeah because of i think important uh, flowers from holland yeah i mean it's going to be a question of patience with some i mean there are lots um, the, 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 there's two or probably a hundred and odd cuttings in the garden but they're going to take five, ten years before there are anything worth looking at other than sticks in pots. You can get them. I mean, when Alex was sending, selling his two and a half inch square pots at shows, he was selling them a pound a piece. Um, just a second, let me. No, 
Don't need to do that. Um, I just need to look properly. Um, the, the, that's the one I bought in summer. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, I bought looking, that. That's I looking bought, quite nice. Yeah. yeah. I bought that from the Windlesham Gardener. Do you know where that is? It's not one I know. It's in Windlesham, and I bought that for twenty pound. Yeah. So, I mean, the 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 when 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 uh, Satsuki were originally started to be seen in this country, they were taken into um, the Japanese Satsuki people were keen to encourage, so they um, they gave Wisley a cutting of about a hundred different varieties. So somewhere in Wisley Gardens, there are Satsuki azaleas. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but it's like, that's the one I was looking for. Um, that tree is from a cutting. It's now 30, 40 years on, but it was a cutting. Um, so you a pound and a bit of time and you can do it. Um, if you, if you get lucky and you can find a garden center that's got something they've grown on a bit more, you can do any rhododendron will will style the same way. The only difference is that a rhododendron will flower later or earlier, but the techniques are identical. They, their growth habit is the same. This is this is just a rhododendron. It's a Satsuki azalea because it's been hybridized and specific developed to do what they do but it's a rhododendron the purple ones in the hedgerow will do the same thing you would grow them and prune them the same way and you can get an awful lot of very nice rhododendrons with small flowers and some really nice colors um normally what i do is i do if I got any, no, all the ones I have are gone at the moment, but I'll go around the garden centers at the end of the rhododendron season because they get them all in when they're in flower. Three weeks later, when they, the flowers are faded, they're, they're selling them off cheap. Yeah. It's a good time to buy them. I think that's a very good point, actually. Uh, and so, Gregor, I think that could be the way to go. To develop and, and move that 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 way further, and then that way you can save up all that money you're earning, <laughs> ready to right. purchase, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ready to ready to go to Paul, pop down there, and then see what he's got that he's happy to share with you. For you a can buy me one two. while he's at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you're down this way, it's always worth giving Colette Harrison at um, Bonsai Tree Southampton a call. Yeah. Um, Colette, yeah, yeah, a few times. She, she normally gets in trees and she buys them and moves them on. She doesn't put huge markups like some people. Yeah, I mean Colette. Colette was the first person that we ever discovered. We're in Basingstoke. All right. Um, it's, like, it's amazing. We started like about two two and a half years ago, and it's amazing how initially there was there was no sign of anyone doing bonsai. Whereas now we've found so many places, and and where about where are you based? I'm in Southampton, Hedge. So, so apart from Colette, is there anywhere else around this way that you recommend to go to? You mentioned Windy Bay. They, they, right? They've all started to fade. I mean, you used to have Daiichi at Newbury, but he 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 passed away about six months ago. Um, you got um, um, there's a couple around it um, north of London. There's Windy Banks. Um, there, there is Lever Hovut in Kent. Um, they're, they're getting very thin on the ground at the moment. I've got a few trees this year from, um, and I've forgotten, I've forgotten them. It's his dad that wrote a book, the Bonsai book, and it, he now runs it himself, and it's quite a big. Corrin. What's it called? Corrin. Corrin. Corrin Tomlinson. Corrin. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah. yeah. Yes, I bought. There, so there, there's, there's, there at Nottingham. Yeah, and I know, I know it's not local, but I mean, I bought yeah. a few trees from him, and they've been posted very, very well and very well yeah. wrapped. And um, um, the, when we get back to shows, it's always worth if if you want 
larches. It's worth seeing Chris Thomas from Wales. He's mm -hmm. always got some. He collects them from the wild, so they're 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 different. Um, he sometimes have blackthorn, but blackthorns have big prices on them because they're very hard to come by. Um, Gregor, uh, I I highly recommend popping to uh, Ken's at Windy Bank. Uh, uh, he has some great. Tiana, Tiana got there. her trident from him. Yeah, yeah. I got my trident from him. Give him a call really before good. you travel, though, because he's I'm not always there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Paul, there's a question from Jonathan. I don't know if you can see it. No, I can can't Yamadori remember. work for azaleas? I do mean from, I, I'm guessing, skips or garden clearance. Yeah, they, they, they should work fine. I mean, what you tend to find is that the big lumps of sat, uh, rhododendron will come out and they will have been dug out with very little root. So they're going to need a lot of care. Um, depending how little root, if, it, if it's literally been hacked out and there's next to no root on it, I'd treat it like a giant cutting and I would pack it with sphagnum and put a little bit of heat under it to, to get it to root quickly. As you started to see root at the edge of the sphagnum, I would start to look to put some peat in and, and getting it growing nicely that way and, and just get the roots growing before I worried about and just prune it back quite hard on the top so that it's not desiccating before the roots have established. Um, I was not a rhododendron, but there was a piece of box that came into one of our club shows that someone had thrown it into the skip outside and I'd seen it coming in, but my hands were full and someone picked it up and gave it to another uh, grower and and, I, <laughs> and it was a gorgeous tree six months later. Oh, excellent. Yeah, any, any, any lumps you find, it's always worth sticking them in a pot with, uh, depending how much TLC you can give them. Um, big trunks are always difficult to grow so you can find a big trunk to start with it's normally relatively easy to get them to back bud and grow branches once you've sorted the roots out i think that answers uh, jonathan's question any any more before we sign off uh, any any comments on the presentation, any, has it been fine for you? Very Give us a thumbs up. Yes, yeah, very good. informative. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thumbs Paul. up from me. Well done, Paul. Thank you. Pleasure. Brilliant. That's what we need. Oh, we might have a question. Oh, I can't see it. No big thank yous from people. If we have any questions go, in the future, I mean, is Paul open to? Is there some way of contacting him or asking questions? Yeah, just drop us an email, paul at esslinger.com. Okay. Go direct. Okay. So it means get off your ass and do something. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and I can say that to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, paul, just, just so we're clear, apparently Gregor and Tina might be, might be joining us as a club. Uh, and be. we're just, this is the initiation. Do they have a sense of humour? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, they're not allowed in otherwise. Oh, like... Are they Steve? No. <laughs> God help you. God help you. <laughs> no, really. So, uh, yeah, the banter starts. Yeah, all the games are good. Good to hear. Just so you know, we're not together. Yeah, we're not together. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely not together. <laughs> they might have guessed um, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go down that road. No, no. I don't. <laughs> uh, right, Paul. Day. What can I do? But uh, thank you on behalf of Twickenham, Bonsai. Uh, really appreciate your presentation. I've got a funny feeling we most probably like to do it again. Hopefully live. That's fine. I look forward to it. Yeah, thank you very much. If you take yourselves off mute, 
give Paul a big clap because I just think that was wonderful tonight. Really did, really good, really nice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Paul, just thought question. If uh, someone's coming down to your neck of the woods and they contact you, you with enough notice, are they or we, I, able to come and see your your collection? Yeah, I'm sure we can arrange it. It's, it's, with, with appointment. it's just finding the time, that's all, because I'm, I'm away quite often with other things I do. But if we can arrange it, that'd be fine. Brilliant, because I've been down there, uh, I've seen Colette and to Dave Simpson. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's all yeah, I do a bit of base. competition fly fishing, so quite often I'm away for the weekend and things like that, so... I was but if, if I'm mean, around, you're more than welcome. Tina's just suggested, I mean, so we're in Basingstoke, we're right in the middle pretty much of Twickenham where you are, and, and she's got a huge garden. Um, but um, so, so we fun. could do quite a good kind of meeting of a few of us, maybe in the spring or something. We're all more than welcome. Plenty of space. Right, okay. Did you hear that, lads? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Yeah. Tina's for the night. I mean, yeah. it's safe. It's safe. Yeah. No breakfast. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's your job. Oh, okay. Only for the men. Uh, right, anyway, we're going to wind this up. Thank you so much. All those that uh, attended, I'm not sure where you're from, uh, various places, but just spread the word, spread, spread the information uh, that Paul was shared uh, and you've got his email Paul could you repeat that again please it's paul at esslinger.com there you go uh, I'm sure he's happy to answer any questions and, and keep sharing the love about the bonsai really have a great enjoy, evening everybody enjoy and keep well and keep safe thank you Paul and thank you great. for your time thank you Paul bye Thank you very much, Paul. Very good. Enjoyed that tonight. Paul, excellent. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. No, not a problem. We'll talk again soon. I hope so. Please. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.